Okay, good morning, dear students, and welcome to our today's lecture. Today, uh, we are going to talk about syntax and its types or different rules of syntax. Uh, already, we have discussed something about syntax and also its types. So today, we will try to revise some of the stuff, and then we'll move on to some new, uh, new things or new rules about syntax. So uh, let's start. So we discussed about the very basic definition of syntax, that what is it? And also we talked about uh, syntactical rules. So we could see that we have two different types of syntactical rules. One is phrase structure rules, and another one is transformational rules. And while actually we are discussing this, I try to show you that the syntactical, uh, uh, especially this phrase structure rule, if we really want to talk about it, or the very basic of the sentence structure, if we really want to talk about it, then we can see that we have noun phrase and we have verb phrase, that is NP and VP. And these phrase structure rules, this is also called constituent structure rules, <clears throat> because all these are, uh, you can say the combination of different words, phrases and therefore sentences so all these are constituents that means they're different ingredients of a particular sentence that's why they are called constituent structure rules so phrase structure rule it has another name that we call constituent structure rules then there is another another uh, uh, rules that is called transformational rules and transformational rules attempt to recognize the well-formed sentence and which sentences are related to each other Transformational rules consist of deep structure and surface structure. So well from sentences, that means the syntactic and the structure of a sentence and when it is well formed and which sentences are related to each other. So there are different sentences and these sentences are related to each other. So that is the part of transformational rules. And in the transformational rules, we have deep structure and also we have surface structure. And here, if you just take a look at the screen, you can see that the phrase structure rules, which is uh, in another way, it is also called constituent structure rules. And after that, we have transformational rules. And in the transformational rules, you can see there is deeper structure and there is surface structure. Deeper structure is the meaning given, that is the meaning of the sentence, that is the underlying structure of the sentence, that is deeper structure with meaning. And surface structure, that is a pronunciation, the articulated part of the sentence, that is called the surface structure. Then we talked about phrase structure rules. And when it comes to phrase structure rules, then we need to think about parts of speech. That's the very basic, the very basic unit of sentence. So, and this is the part of the sentence. So to understand sentence structure, we must learn to recognize these basic units. So, in another, in the next slide, you can see that from here we can see the parts of the speech that is noun. The traditional approach, you can say to the, uh, I mean, different words and their classification that is noun, and then pronoun. We have adjective, we have verb, adverb, preposition, conjunction, and obviously interjection. So these are the very basic classification, traditional way of. I mean, uh, classifying words. Then we have, uh, that is a descriptive approach. And it is offered by the structuralist. That means they uh, actually, I mean, based on the structure. So they analyze the sentence and the types and the units, just like a structure. So provide the division. So these are structuralists, they provide the division. I mean, from a very broader perspective, they try to classify words into two. One is open classes and another one is closed classes. Open classes are those, we also call it lexical or content words, which includes nouns, verbs, adjectives, and adverbs. And you know, know them. So that's actually, we don't, we don't need further, cl further clarification. So you know what is noun, what is verb, what is adjective, and what is adverb. So that is the open class. Um, and you can see these, classes, each of these classes actually, they can be defined by formal distributional 
features, which we can classify as morphological or and syntactic frames. Morphological frames help identify a lexical class by stating the type of morphemes that can be attached to each other in class, in a class. So identify a lexical class. So you can add some, uh, some kind of name. So the type of morphemes that can be attached to each word in a class. And syntactic frames state the type of words that can precede or follow each word in a class. So you see the morphological frames that actually will get a specific name like noun, pronoun, verb, and verb. And also you will get prefix and suffixes and therefore we'll, go, we'll get affix or affixation. And in the syntactic frames, you will see, for example, the structure is like this, subject, verb, object, or you can say subject and predicate. In the subject, you have got noun. In the predicate, you have got verb, adjective, adverb, and many other parts of the speeches that you can get there. So syntactic is which one will come first, which one will come next. That is, I mean, the order of the words that we, you will get in the syntactic frames. <clears throat> in the morphological frames, you will find the lexical class, open or uh, is it closed? Or is it a noun, pronoun, or is it a verb or adverb like this? And the syntactic, you will find after subject, there will be verb, after verb, there will be object, or after verb, there will be complement in this way. Then close word, close class words. I talked about it in one of my lectures. I hope you can recall some of it. Close class words, better known as function words, are those which have little meaning outside of their grammatical purpose to relate from class words to each other. So they include determiners, auxiliary verbs, preposition, and conjunctions. So you can see the open class words, they can exist independently. On the other hand, closed class words, actually, they are dependent on other words. I mean, they are dependent on the content words or open class words to express their meaning. So individually, they don't have that much meaning, but they have some grammatical function, okay? Like determiner, like A and D, or one, two, three, or these, that, those. So these are the determiners. Auxiliary verbs like am, is, are, was, were. Uh, on the other hand, preposition like in, and uh, in, into, on, up, up to. So these are the prepositions and conjunctions, and, or, but, so like this. So they can't express meaning just like open class words, but they have some grammatical function, purpose. So that's why they are called closed class words. And we also talked about determiner, determiner signal that a noun is falling, such as the sky is falling. So here you can see the, that is the determiner article. Auxiliary, already I have mentioned it. So that is am, is, or was, where. We have some examples here. From there, you can also uh, get to know the prepositions and other, uh, other classifications of words. For example, the man with the beard. So you can see the is the determiner article. Man is the noun. With is the preposition. The, again, determiner. And beard, that is uh, noun. So in this way, we can see now uh, we'll move on to the syntactic categories. Now, a very important fact about constituent structure is that there are different types of constituents with very different uses. We refer to these different types of constituents as syntactic categories. As follows, syntactic, what are those syntactic categories? You can see, so first, you can see that is noun phrase. So we have actually five syntactic categories. That is noun phrase, and the one is verb phrase, then adverb phrase, adjective phrase and preposition phrase. So here you can see the noun phrase. Noun phrase is the most important syntactic categories, for example, that means it will, at least it will have one noun in it. Phrase means that's a combination of two or more words. And in the noun phrase, at least we will have one noun. So as you can see, John, that is a noun. Mailman, it's a noun, but it's a combination of, combination of two words. One is male, another one is man. Then we have most students. So most actually it is an adjective, therefore you can say it's a determiner. And the students, that is a noun. Then many Americans, many determiner or an adjective and Americans, that is noun. A huge lovable beer, 
So you can see a determiner, huge, you can see adjective, lovable, adjective, dear, that is noun. So in similarly, we can also see a student from Brazil, the table in the corner, the people we interviewed, John and his friends. So you can see all these are the examples of noun phrase. So they have noun at the end and before that, we have other determiners and also adjectives. So a noun phrase can be used as the subject of a sentence, as noun can be used as the subject of a sentence. Similarly, noun phrase also can be used as the subject of the sentence. And uh, you can see, as in as direct object, it can be a part of the direct object. It can be a part of the indirect object. For example, most student students enjoy football matches. So you can see most students enjoy football matches. So you can see most students, that is the noun phrase, and it is in the place of the subject. So subject is most students, enjoy is the verb, football matches, that is another noun phrase. So it has been used as an object there, you can see. Then again, he likes most students. So he is the pronoun, so that is subject. Likes is the verb, and most students here, it has been used as an object. The dean gave most students their books this morning. So you can see the dean, that is the noun phrase. Gave is the verb because dean means dean of the faculty. For example, our dean, our dean, sir, you can see K, K, K Alam, sir, he is the dean of the faculty. So he's the dean. So the dean gave most students their books in this morning. So the dean is the noun phrase because it is the combination of article or the determinant the and the noun din. So the din is a noun phrase. It is in the place of a subject. Gave is the verb. Most students, that is another noun phrase. It is in the place of object. Their books this morning. So that is uh, the part of the compound subject. Or you can see that is the predicate. Gave most students their books this morning. And this morning, that is actually, uh, it, it is act, acting here just like an adverb yes, because it is mentioning time. Now, sir, last it. Yes. So, which one? Which last, one? Last, 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 uh, last sentence. Last sentence. Sir, last, last sentence. Uh, can verb. Last most students their books in morning. It looks like a bang light. Okay. The dean. The, the dean is a subject. Okay. And okay. gave is the verb. And most students that is in the place of objects. You can see that the most students their books. The dean gave most students their books. Forget about the this morning. Even if you don't use the this morning, still you can complete the sentence. The dean gave most students their books. Dean, this morning it expresses time. Dean, that is a subject, gave is the verb. Most students their books. That is the object. Okay. Now, is it clear? Yes, yes. Sir. Okay. So, noun phrase can be used as a subject, noun phrase can be used as an object. Okay. So, these are some, some of the examples. A single word can count as a noun phrase. You can also say single word also can be counted as a noun phrase. I've already mentioned it. So here you can see these are the determiners. I mean, you can see the noun phrases begin with expressions like the following. We have already mentioned it, most students. So you can see the noun phrase, it has started with the determiner most. Similarly, the mailman, die student. So it starts with these kind of noun phrases. It starts with these kind of uh, words or expressions like the, a, every, many, some, most, all, for example, uh, all the students, few students, several students, three students, at least five students, my students, Mary's students or Mary's mother or Mary's, uh, Mary's car. So you see, car, but before that, Mary's. So car is a noun, Mary's is there. So also we can use this positive form. Okay. Then determiners, of course, are there. So we have already come to know about the determiners, like D and other stuff. So we don't want, I don't want to repeat it. Now let's move on to the verb phrase. 
So verb phrases, another extremely important syntactic category. Some examples are the expression as in the following. So verb phrase, certainly there will be a verb, okay? In the verb phrase, we'll have a verb like snow. In Bengali, nagdaka. It's a verb. Then you can see like marry. Then you can see give a prize to John. So give is the verb. So it is starting with the verb give a prize to John. That is the verb phrase. Belief that dogs are smart. So it's after belief that dogs are smart. So totally it's a verb phrase. Want to leave. So you see want and to leave infinitive. So verb phrase. Sleep soundly. Can lift. So can is the verb. Lift 100 pounds. Is is the verb. Wearing another verb in the continuous form. That is the main verb. So is wearing sunglasses. So you can see that is the verb phrase. Go home and have a sleep. So go, that is the verb. After that home and have a sleep. Totally. Uh, actually, it has made this verb, verb phrase. So in the verb phrase, it will start with the verb, and therefore, after that, right after that, you will find some other words. So a verb phrase can be used as a predicate of a sentence, as in the example below. So we know it very clearly that verb phrase, actually, it can be used as a predicate. That means we'll have the subject, and from verb to the last to the sentence, that is the predicate. So John and Bill, that is the compound noun, and you can see that is a compound subject. John and Bill, that is subject, like English. So from like to English, that is the predicate, and also that is the verb phrase. Then next sentence, Henry wants to leave. So Henry is a subject, wants to leave. So from once and then until leave, so that is the verb phrase, the total predicate. Okay. Now, a certain verbs such as snow, swim, talk, and die can form a verb phrase all by themselves. Verbs of this sort called intransitive verbs. So there are some verbs actually they don't need any, any object. So if they don't need any object, so in that case, those verb phrases are all by themselves. So, and we call them intransitive verbs. They don't have any object. And there are verbs, they need object. Without object, they can't express themselves. We call them transitive verbs. For example, uh, look at the second sentence, chase cars. Chase is the verbs. What does it chase? Cars. Annoy three burly sergeants. So you can see annoy three burly sergeants. So annoy is the verb, and he's annoying three burly sergeants. That is the objects. Annoying whom? Three burly sergeants develop every role of film develop what if you ask the question what then you'll get the answer every role of film so that is the object so you can see it can have it can be transitive or intransitive so here chase curse chase is a transitive verb and now three bali sergeants and now it's transitive verb then develop every role of film so develop then every role of film so de after develop we have the object so that is another transitive verbs so uh, other verbs combine with other sorts of expressions to form a verb phrase. Verbs like give and owe combine with two noun phrases, uh, as in a give prize to John. So you can see give a prize. We so prize is another uh, prize is an object, and to whom that is to John. So that is uh, actually the object to the preposition to. But you can see. The prize is a direct object and John is an indirect object. So when I owe, I owe him $200 or uh, owe Larry's brother several hundred dollars. For example, uh, I owe Larry's brother several hundred dollars. I owe, I Larry's brother several hundred dollars. So I owe Larry's brother. So you see Larry's brother, that is once you can see the object. And then several hundred dollars, that is another object. So you can see O has two objects. One is Larry's brother, I owe Larry's brother. I mean, Larry Bhair Kachir Vini, Epojabu Sendasa Shesho de Parto. Then again, he, uh, um, the speaker says that I owe Larry's brother several hundred dollars. The key target is the pound of the Nazi, Shita Rulek. So the Shesha object is Dutu, at Tocha Larry's brother. Our direct object of the several hundred dollars. The later to die transitive verb. So it, this O, it has taken uh, Larry's brother that is in direct object and several hundred dollars in animate object. So that is direct uh, direct object. So Larry's brother in direct object, several hundred dollars, that is direct objects. So it has taken 
two objects. That's why we can say O is a ditransitive verb. Amra O take ditransitive. Dimane duto. J verb duty kormo nai. Duty object nai. Tale O duty object nai. So I'm going to take a multi party. Ditransitive verb. So uh, uh, in the verb categories, you can see it can also take two verbs. And also, certain verb phrase consists of an auxiliary or helping verb, like can, could, should, may, might, will, have, be, uh, am, is, are. So it can take all these. So we can go to the example sentences, like the onions were chopped by John. You can say onions were. So were chopped. That is the verb phrase. Chop, were chopped by John. That is the verb phrase. So here we have two verbs. One is auxiliary, that is primary auxiliary that is where and we have the main verb that is chopped and when we use the model auxiliaries besides model auxiliaries when we will use primary auxiliaries like am is are uh, was where in that case when you use it in a sentence then the main verb either it will be in the past participle form or it will be the present participle form that means either it will be past participle that means v3 chopped 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 the third one or ing, for example, John is chopping the onions. You can, if you look at the sentence C, John is chopping the onions. So is, you can see, and the chopping, ing, progressive form, present participle. So these two forms, actually, it will come right after am, is, or was, or that means after be verb. So we need to take care of it. All right, so do you have any question? Uh, up to this. Is it clear? Dear students, is it clear? Yes. Okay. Because we have already discussed it. So I'm just giving you the summary of our previous discussions before we move on to the new items. Okay. Now, adjective phrase, it will act as an adjective. You can understand it. So we have some examples here. This is one of the most important syntactic categories like smart. That is an adjective very fat fat is an adjective and then also there's another adjective that is very with the very actually we it has been intensified okay the next one as crazy as john more intelligent than mary starting to win so you can see uh we have many adjectives here so starting in bengali you call it mischief so that is an adjective more intelligent than mary so adjective phrase you can see intelligent that is an adjective more that is another adjective crazy that is an adjective certain that is an adjective okay so uh, it is used to modify nouns and does often appear as constituents of a noun phrase so as a part of the noun phrase you can also find adjective phrase so adjective phrase can be a part of the noun phrase because adjective modifies noun so certainly in the noun phrase we can have adjective phrase Okay, the next syntactic category is adverbial phrase. So you can see adverbial phrase are often used to modify verbs and adjectives as shown in the following example. So you can see it here. So as the adverb, as the adverb modifies the verb and other adverbs, similarly adverbial phrases also it will modify verbs or other adverbs. It's the same function, same grammatical function. Here you can see soundly, fiercely, there are single adverbs. Then as fluently as John, it's an adverbial phrase because fluently, almost certainly. So you can see almost certainly, certainly, that is the L-Y. You can see it, it will modify a verb. So that is also an adverbial phrase. Sleep soundly, sleep is the verb, soundly, that is an adverb. So actually it mentions the manner of sleep. So how actually someone is going to sleep? He is going to sleep soundly. So you can see if you ask the question how, then you can you get the answer to this question that is soundly. So undoubtedly that is an adverb. So adverbial phrase. Okay. Uh, okay, so just like adjective, as adjective, uh, adjective phrase, it can be the part or the constituent of the noun phrase. Similarly, adverb phrase also appear as constituent of verb phrases and adjective phrases. Okay. Now, uh, prepositional phrase, the last one of the syntactic categories you can see. 
Prepositional phrases always consist of a preposition. So it will start with the preposition like to, from, with, for, at, on, under, about, through, uh, okay, plus a noun phrase. So it is a combination of preposition and a noun phrase. So you can see from Brazil. So you can see from the preposition and Brazil, that is a noun. So you can say it's a prepositional phrase with John and Bill. So you can see it has started with with, that is a preposition and John and Bill obviously their nouns so it's a uh, you can say it's a prepositional phrase because it is started with a preposition then for nothing similarly so you can see so a prepositional phrase can be a constituent of a wide range of expressions it can be a constituent of a wide range of cons i mean expressions it can be a part of the verb phrase it can be a part of the noun phrase adjective phrase and adverbial phrase so here we have some examples. Go to the movie. So you can see to the movie. That is a that is a provisional phrase, but it is, it is a part of the verb phrase because it has started with go. That is the verb. So go to the movie. So to the movie, that is a provisional phrase, but it's part of the bigger phrase that is go to the movie verb phrase. Uh, next one, a student from Brazil. So you can see a student from Brazil, that is a noun phrase because it has started with an adjective and uh, that adjective is followed by a noun student. But after that, you can see from Brazil. So that is the prepositional phrase. So you can see that prepositional phrase, it is in the middle of the noun phrase or at the end of the noun phrase, you can see. So it has been a, it has become a part of the noun phrase. So we can find prepositional phrase in the noun phrase in the raw phrase, in the adjective phrase, in the adverbial phrase. Angry with John and Bill. So you see angry, that is an adjective. With John and Bill, that is prepositional phrase. So angry with John and Bill, this greater adjective phrase, within that greater adjective phrase, you can see the prepositional phrase that is with John and Bill. Then separately from others. So separately, that is that verb. And with that, we have from others. So from is a preposition and others, that is a pronoun. So you can see from this adverbial phrase, within that adverbial phrase, you can notice from others, the prepositional phrase. So we can find prepositional phrase within other phrases, within other categories. Now from here, we'll start the discussion of the sentence. So we have different kinds of sentences and which is very important, uh, you know it already, but just it's, it's just a reminder because we talked about the very uh, even the smallest unit of a sentence that is the uh, parts of speech. Then we moved on to uh, the phrase structure, different kinds of phrases, the syntactic categories, and now another part of the syntactic categories that is uh, that is a sentence. So you see, from word to sentence. Okay, so. Uh, traditionally, grammars defines a sentence in such terms as the complete expression of a single thought. So sentence means the complete expression of a single, uh, single thought. That means it will give a complete sense, complete idea. If a sentence doesn't give a complete idea, it, if it doesn't complete the meaning, then you cannot say that that is a sentence. So modern uh, studies avoid this emphasis because the, of the difficulties involved in saying what thoughts are. So it's very complicated that what do you mean by thought? What is the definition of thought? Since actually it complicates the situation. So that's why modern studies actually, it doesn't emphasize only on thoughts. That if a sentence completes the thought, then we'll call it a sentence. So in, in modern studies, actually they don't want to go by this very simplistic definition. Uh, okay, so an egg can express a thought but it would not be considered uh, a complete sentence. For example, if you say an egg, egg to dim, the thought is complete, then can we call it a sentence? We can't call it a sentence because there are some other constituents of a sentence, those are missing. For example, verb, adjective, adverbials, prepositions, and different other, different other grammatical uh, items are missing here. I shut the door as it as it was called, is one sentence, but it could easily be analyzed as two thoughts. Here you can see, 
a, a single thought. So if you go by the, this rule that it's a single thought, then the compound and complex sentences, they can introduce several thoughts in the single sentence. In that case, shouldn't we call it a sentence? Uh, traditional grammar, connect expression a single thought compound sentence so do it into sentence actually the complex sentence so shake us to call out the idea the actor sentence so also one thought single thought single thought in biology do the thought into thought with a little sentence bull one it was a cop for example I shot the door you see this is one thought shot the door it's a complete sentence done then again, as it was cold, is in, a, in 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 one sentence. So you can see, why do you why do you shut the door? Because it was cold. So you see, two thought. One is the shutting the door. That is one thought, and cold is another thought. Do you get the point that I'm saying, dear students? Do you understand me? Hello. Fuad, have you got it? What I've, what I've said. Hello, Fuad, do you, do you follow me? Uh, or, yes, sir. Okay. So uh, if it is not a single thought, it doesn't mean that we cannot call it a sentence. Even if there are two or three thoughts, still we'll call it a sentence according to modern the definition of the sentence. Okay. As we have already witnessed it in this sentence that I shut the door as it was cold. So cold is one thought and shutting the door, that is another thought, but it's a single sentence, two thoughts. Still, we'll call it a sentence. Okay. Uh, then you can see some traditional grammars give a logical definition to the sentence. Okay, no problem. Just be with us. Okay, don't no problem. Be with us. No problem. No problem. Uh, okay. So some traditional grammars give a logical definition to the sentence. The most common approach proposes that a sentence has a subject, the topic, and the predicate, what is being said about the topic. So there will be a topic and something will be said about the topic. That is the predicate. These approach work quite well for some sentences, such as the book is on the table, where we can argue that the book, that is the sentence, what is it talking about? So the book is the, you can see the topic and it is on the table, that is the predicate, okay? Now, uh, our timing is running out. So I would, I would like to request you to join in the second session. Then we'll have more discussion about this sentence, okay? Please join again. Thank you very much for your patience.